was a dark and stormy night Nor'easter rolling in It's a long 12 hours The power's out again I pray for inner strength And that we don't lose no lives Just another day In the first responder's eyes Half a cup of coffee's gone The first run comes in A car slid off the road There's a family trapped within My heart beats like a hammer I can barely catch my breath I'm thinking the worst And hoping for the best difference and the first on every scene it's a heavy heavy burden to carry all this burden when you can't unsee the things you've seen it keeps going on when those sirens are gone My shift is finally over I gotta deal with what's mine And try to find a way To leave those tragedies behind So I hug my two children A kiss on my wife Just another day The first responder's life First on every scene It's a heavy, heavy burden To carry all this burden When you can't unsee The things you've seen It keeps going on When those sirens are gone The first on every scene And it's a heavy, heavy burden To carry all this hurting When you can't unsee The things you've seen It keeps going on When those sirens are gone Hey, welcome to the award-winning Mad Radio with John and Sam. We are your First Responders Network. Hey, Sam coming to you live from the studio, and John unfortunately got called uh, to work a shift this evening. Uh, so you got me. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Hey, we have got a fantastic show today. And, um, you know, if things don't seem to be calming down for our first responders. Uh, in fact, things seem to be ramping up. And each week, um, there's, there's always something new that seems to make the news or seems to make the rounds um, and social media. And while John and I want you uh, all first responders to know that we are absolutely here for you 1 million percent, we also want you to know that sometimes we understand that you guys may be drawn into some difficult decisions. We know that politicians, no matter what state uh, or frankly what country you're watching from, they have seemed to have uh, drawn us in 
to their political mess. And it's having a lot of repercussions um, around the country. Uh, just to highlight one story out of Round Rock, Texas, right here, a couple hours uh, from where this show comes to you live from. Um, we had a school board that um, has put police officers in a very precarious position. Um, the video clearly shows uh, that unfortunately the police officers are preventing the public from entering the school board room in violation of the Open Meetings Act. Folks, Open Meetings Act is law. You can call the Attorney General's office for the state of Texas. Uh, the school board should not be using our local police officers as shields um, against our own citizens um, to prevent uh, the public from being able to exercise uh, what is lawfully their right to do. So, you know, it, it may come down to where you find yourself in being put in that position. I hope it doesn't as John and I have spoken about uh, on the show. But just remember, you know, the oath that you took and who you swore to serve and protect. It's not the politicians, and it's certainly not their opinions. And when, there's, when they are breaking the law and asking you to cover their rear ends for it, we can't, we can't be doing that. We, we all know better. We've all been in kind of iffy situations uh, in our work life. Um, but it's time to, you know, kind of put a stop to that and stand truly with the citizens in our communities who we swore to protect and serve. So I will get off Sam's soapbox right there. And, um, hopefully you guys are like seeing my really cool shirt. I'm giving you a sneak, kind of a sneak peek right here. And, um, <clears throat> We'll get into uh, why I am wearing this shirt in a second here, but some really exciting things going on this week here in the DFW. We are welcoming in uh, Blue Help. Um, if you haven't been on their website, bluehelp.org, they are the clearinghouse for keeping statistics uh, on uh, suicide in our first responder community. It's a fortunate and unfortunate uh, situation, but without them, we wouldn't really know where we need to focus our efforts to make a difference. And we're welcome, welcoming uh, them into the DFW. And today, um, uh, they are doing a virtual reality um, kind of therapy. They're launching it with um, Axon, which if you're a first responder and law enforcement officer, you know Axon, they're the folks that uh, do the body cameras and the, and the cameras and the police cruisers. Um, and they are really into uh, putting more and more <clears throat> into our first responders. So we thank them uh, for coming into town and uh, doing that today. And then uh, Saturday night, <clears throat> there is a gala um, to raise money for the Heroes Memorial Bridge Foundation. Now, if you haven't heard about the Heroes Bridge Memorial Foundation, there is going to be a park that is going to be built uh, out in Rowlett, Texas. I'm very blessed it will be within walking distance to my home. And this park is dedicated to the memories of all of our first responders as well as our military and our veterans that we have lost to suicide. It will be the only park of its kind in the world, and it will be a place where family members can come and remember their loved ones like they lived, not how they died. And um, there's so many incredible um, aspects to it. You can go on to walkthebridge.org. That's walkthebridge.org, um, <clears throat> and take a look at a 3D rendering of that after the show. Not right now. So um, without further ado, let's get back to why I'm wearing this awesome shirt. Um, because the guest that I have on today, his name is Jake. I have to use my glasses. Thank you, COVID, for leaving me with worse, uh, worse eyesight. I will just leave it at that. 
And this is uh, this is directly from Jake. It's called a letter from Jake. Lights and sirens in the uniform have been my dream for as long as I can remember. Being a police officer was my only plan as a child, and I did that. I went to school and trained for a career in law enforcement. I served and protected and worked for the community, and I saw things that changed the way I see the world. I responded to more than just the active shooters in the news stories. I got to see real people in real life, both the good and the really bad. After 14 years as a police officer, God asked me to do more. Along the way, God gave me a vision of law enforcement being protected, loved, and supported. That vision has become SHIELD 616. I believe that God doesn't give us plans and visions and stepping stones to be ignored. I'm working every day to share this vision with people all over the country. Our team is working tirelessly that we might help first responders go toward danger, knowing that they have the best physical protection available and the love of their community behind them. But most importantly, we want our first responders to know they can put their hope and trust in the ultimate provider of safety and peace, Jesus Christ. On behalf of all of us at SHIELD 616, we can't thank you enough. And that is a personal letter from our guest today, Jake, founder and president of SHIELD 616. Jake, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with you, even from my car. <laughs> well, we know that you are super busy. We thank you for uh, fitting us into your busy schedule. And we were determined, I mean, if you had to do it from the top of a building, we would, we would take it. So um, Jake uh, met him and his staff at Carry the Load uh, here in Dallas, the Dallas Memorial March um, in May, at the end of May of this year over Memorial Day uh, weekend. And they were nice enough to give me this shirt. Yep. Well, I love it. And let's see if you can see the back. Got the little the four leaf clover with the thin blue line. So one of my favorites. Um, love this shirt. Thank you so much. <laughs> we call him the tactical leprechaun. Thanks for representing. There you, there you go. The tactical leprechaun. Well, you know, <clears throat> for those folks that haven't heard of you guys before, I don't know how, because you're all over the place raising a ton of money to do something that you know, most people don't think about, including myself. Uh, Self-admittedly, I believe that, you know, you join the police force, the body armor just comes with a job. It's provided just uh, like a flashlight, like a regular piece of equipment. And through talking to your staff, I realized that's not necessarily true. So let's, uh, let's get right into it. And why you created Shield 616 and what you guys do. Yeah, yeah well, you know, a lot of the community members, and, and obviously I'm talking to the civilians, you know, when they see a first responder out there, you know, specifically a police officer, you know, they see them wearing, a, wearing the uniform. And I think most people know that we wear a vest underneath that uniform. And, and so obviously what people don't realize is that vest is only designed to stop handgun calibers. It's not designed to stop rifle calibers. And so, you know, for me, in my experience, I went to a handful of different things where our threat was a rifle. And, you know, our, our citizens didn't realize that no matter what threat comes our way, we're expected to protect them. But if it's, in, if, if it's involving a rifle threat, most patrol officers don't have protection against that. So uh, that obviously affected me uh, during part of my career and obviously, you know, kind of launched this effort to, to get, you know, better equipment out to, their, to our first responders. And obviously, you know, through my experiences, you know, it's not just about that gear. And, you know, now more than ever, not only do our officers need greatest protection available to allow them to do their job, but, you know, they need our support. They need our, our encouragement and our prayers. And so our mission is twofold provide them with the best available armor, all day rifle rated armor from Angel Armor, 100% free of charge to the agency, but to also build very critical relationships between the first responders and the citizens that they're serving. But now more than ever, we've, we've got to come alongside them and tell them that 
you know, thank you. We, we stand with you. We're grateful for the service that you're providing. And so it's not just a, a physical component. It's also that, that mental component. And, um, you know, I, I was blessed to start SHIELD a couple of years ago and, and left the law enforcement world. But, you know, it's hard. You know, law enforcement's always been hard. It's always been dangerous. And, you know, you, you play that tough mental game. And, you know, now more than ever, they need that encouragement to help them get through their days. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you, you briefly mentioned that you realize it during your, your law enforcement career that, Hey, we are not protected from uh, rifle rounds. Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, you are an active shooter responder, not only at the new life church shooting in December, 2007, but also planned parenthood in 2015. Yep. Yeah, and so, like you said, December of 2007, I was one of the patrol officers with the Colorado Springs Police Department uh, that responded to the New Life Church active shooter. And, uh, you know, in this shooting, uh, it was a true active shooter. Uh, this individual's only intent going there was to kill and destroy. Um, but one of the things that I did there that day, you know, in that one, I was never in harm's way. But one of the things that I had to do was I had to guard uh, the deceased suspect's body. And so for, for hours, you know, I looked at this individual and, you know, looked at what he chose to wear and I got to see, you know, his backpack with all of his reloading supplies, but then also, so, you know, what a choice. That's what everyone wants to know, what kind of a weapon. And, and in this situation, he had an AR-15. And so for hours, I just stood there and stared at that, just thinking to myself, you know, what would I have done? What would I have done if I was the first responder here? How would I have engaged with the suspect? when I have no protection against that threat. So, uh, you know, it obviously affected all of us. And what that did for me is I ended up going out and buying my own rifle rated armor. And, you know, I had to spend my own money and, you know, the vest wasn't quite right, but it was all I could afford. Uh, in fact, I got the rifle rated uh, plates uh, from Craigslist from a retiring army sergeant. And so I was hoping that, you know, hopefully those were still good, but at least I had something to protect me while I was out there protecting our community. And then fast forward, um, like you said, uh, to, towards, the, towards the end of my career, uh, I was blessed to be part of our special response team. And, and uh, Black Friday 2015, I'll never forget when, when I uh, got that SWAT page. And, um, you know, I, never, I just froze when I read it. And I just reread it and I reread it. And it said active shooter at Planned Parenthood and, and uh, officers were down. And, and so, you know, I made the decision to respond. I wasn't on call at that time. I actually had the week off, got a family in town, but, um, you know, I fully expected to go there and just help out with whatever I could. And, and I'll never forget when I finally made it to the police department, because I didn't have any of my gear at home. I didn't have a police car at home or anything. And, and, but I'll never forget when I turned on the radio and got to the right radio frequency, again, fully expecting this to be over with. And I'll never forget when I got to the right channel and you could hear the gunfire in the background and you could hear that officer almost yelling into the radio and, and I just remember thinking to myself, man, it's been at least 20 minutes. You know, how many fatalities are we going to have in this shooting? And if you know anything about an active shooter, they typically don't last very long. And, and so obviously responding there that day as part of our, you know, special response team, you know, we were blessed with the good rifle rated armor, good gear, you know, the, the bigger guns, the good training, the armored vehicles. And, but I'll never forget driving down there. And I'll never forget driving down there as fast as I could because I knew all the true first responders, the men and women in the police cars, you know, they didn't have protection against that threat. And they were going up against a threat, an individual with a, you know, a full automatic rifle. They had no protection and yet they were going towards harm's way. And so as I was driving down there, I'll never forget those voices and just hearing the highest level of bravery, the highest level of heroism you could, you could listen to because they were all knowingly going up against the threat. And they were just putting their, you know, themselves to the side to go towards that danger to protect their community. And, and unfortunately, in that shooting, you know, we had, you know, multiple civilians were shot and killed. And we had five police officers shot. And unfortunately, one was killed. And, and you know, it, like you said, God just laid it on my heart. Um, he, he had been working on my heart up to that point. And, um, but just to form a nonprofit that was going to help bridge a pretty big gap. And, 
a gap of multiple things. And it's not, um, it was not just the rifle rated armor that most agencies can't afford for their patrol officers, but it was also that community engagement. So the mission of Shield 616 has always been to rally the community around our first response and to help protect them when they're out there protecting us. And so we have partnered with with Angel Armor. It's an, it's an amazing company and they offer all day rifle rated protection. It's thin enough, light enough that our men and women can wear that all day long, no matter what situation they're in and to have that protection. And it's our hope that by having that, it's gonna embolden them to make that hard decision to go towards danger. And, you know, I heard a saying one time, courage is a choice. And, you know, in those situations, officers have to make that choice. And so I hope that this armor is helping them make that choice to go towards that danger to protect our community. Yeah, well, we think about this level of armor, and you had mentioned reaching out to a, an army person to get that plate. I mean, uh, it's the military grade, the military style, very much more tactical looking, heavier body armor um, that has unfortunately, like I said, become necessary, not only for our patrol officers, but also for our firefighters who have come literally under fire responding uh, to their calls for a number of years now. And, you know, what would you say to either a council member or a mayor or, you know, a politician or a, I'll call it a concerned member of the public who has said, well, we don't want our police officers looking like they're in the military. We don't want this look. Well, obviously, you know, my concern, uh, you know, isn't the look, um, but obviously that's something we have to think about. And so what's really nice about Angel Armor is, you know, the gear they provide, it really matches their uniform. And it's actually a very professional look. And, and a lot of times these vests, and that's why we really went with Angel Armor is because it truly is all day rifle rated armor. So this isn't a second vest that they have to put on, you know, in a situation. They actually might be wearing this underneath their uniform. So their uniform isn't going to change. It isn't going to look any different. And they still get to have that armor. A lot of agencies are going to that external care vest, you know, for, for back issues. And thankfully, you know, Angel Armors, it's a very professional looking vest. And it's the same color as their uniform. And so a lot of people, they can't even tell the difference uh, from what they have not only that rifle rated protection capability, but also a carrying platform to make them look professional. Um, you know, being a professional, looking professional go hand in hand. And we want to make sure that they have that. And, uh, you know, I, you know, like I said earlier, you know, the protection is far outweighs the look, you know, in our eyes. But at the same time, we want to have a professional looking police force out there doing that job. And, and thankfully with Angel Armor, you know, they're able to do that. Yeah, and I've got, um, so I'm screen sharing right now so that folks can see kind of what we're talking about here. So, um, you know, you've got the tactical uh, more looking vest and you can really see it more with the picture of the fire, the fire guys and gal. Um, and the angel armor, uh, are the, the white um th this is this is the actual armor plate that goes in the carrier correct correct yep okay and what uh, first of all i love the name <laughs> um what is it about angel armor that you said done deal we're, we're doing this together compared because there's lots of there's lots of armor out there you know and so, like I said, you know, Angel Armor, you know, they're develop, they've developed and designed, you know, a, a plate that's light enough and thin enough to be able to say all day. And so if you think about what law enforcement used to do, how would we respond? We'd, we'd have a second, you know, active shooter vest in our vehicle. And if the situation warranted it, we'd go back to our vehicle and put that on over our uniform and it would have those heavier plates in there. To protect us against that rifle fire but now with angel armor you're already wearing that so it doesn't matter what situation you're in 
you're wearing ramp rated armor. And whether it's a traffic stop, domestic violence, a car accident, or you are going to a shooting, you're already wearing it. So what that does for a couple of things, one, it saves you time. You don't have to go back to your car. You don't have to up armor. And number two, you're wearing it. You know, you can't predict on every call what you're going to be doing on that on that call. And a lot of times there's situations where, you know, you see these shootings happen and you don't know you're going to be in that shooting. And then you go all the way up to the, the full blown ambushes where cops are just being ambushed. And so for yeah. them to be able to have that on all the time, you know, that's the only company that we know of that's really focused on getting that type of gear out there and having that mentality of all day operated protection not just wearing a vest that's designed only for handgun calibers. And so as you can imagine, to be able to have that level of protection, it's kind of a no brainer for us. You know, we want our first responders to be safe in every single situation that they go out there and deal with. Now for our firefighters, they are just, you know, they are a little bit different because uh, you know, what they do, uh, they do sometimes have to put on a totally different suit if they're fighting the fire. So, you know, sometimes they're, a majority of their vests will be on the, the exterior. Um, you know, plus they're not in their fire trucks all day long. And so it is just a little bit different than, than the police, but it's still a, a professional looking vest that they can go out there and if they have to put that on, they can have that on. Uh, but again, for our first responders to have all day rifle rated armor on them, you know, that's the best type of situation you can be in as a, as a police officer. Yeah, I almost think about, you know, when, if you have the two body armors, you know, and you're rolling up on something, our training brain kicks over, right? So it's like, we're just going, we need to address the threat or we need to take care of the situation. It, 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 it's almost like built into, oh, wait a second, I have to stop myself. I have to armor up and then I can go. And I would, I would imagine just from the training I went through, that would, that would be very difficult. So I totally understand. It's like, you've got it. You go, you respond. Yeah, and you're exactly right. You know, unfortunately here in Colorado, we've had more than our fair share of, of true active shooters. And in talking to some of those first responders, you know, they said exactly that. I didn't take the time to put any vest on. I just went, you know, and that was a detective at the police station. You know, he was expe wasn't expecting to be on the street that day. Uh, you know, so you, you're you exactly right. That mentality, you're probably not going to be thinking to slow down. You got to get there. You got to stop the situation. So it's it's one less thing that you got to think about is putting on your armor. But another thing that we saw in one of the school shootings here in Colorado, talking to one of the officers, you know, when he put that vest on over his uniform, he was so stressed. And, you know, you are going to be stressed in these situations, no matter who you are. He couldn't figure out how to strap his vest on. He'd done it a bunch of times before. He just, he was so stressed and finally just ended up going in and not strapping his vest on. And you can see, in the video surveillance, when he's coming down that hall, he looks like a bird. The sides of his vest were all yeah. as he's coming coming down the hallway, and obviously you applaud him his bravery for for just going in there. But it, again, it's you know time. You know time is not your friend in those situations, and so um, you know obviously. And again, with, with the stress, you know it's one less thing that you got to think about. And so, and then if you start thinking about campus police officers, whether it's, you know your 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 local schools or your colleges. They don't have time to go back to their office or maybe their car on the parking lot. They might be in that building and walk in those hallways. And we don't want them to have to go way out of the way to armor up and then come back in. Like you said, they've got to go right towards that threat. And by having this, they can do that. Yeah. And you also recognize that there's a need for uh, ballistic helmets yep. to go along with it. How did how did you go to the next step with the helmets? Well, obviously from the beginning, we want to obviously protect, you know, all the important areas. So like your vest protects your core. Obviously we want to try and protect the head as best as possible. And, and if you think about it, a lot of times your head's the only thing that's sticking out, whether it's over a, a car hood or peeking around a corner. So we want to make sure that their heads are protected. And so we use a company called Galvian and they deal with both you know, first responders, but also very heavily with our military. And so they make a really good helmet. Um, obviously the human head hasn't changed shape in quite a long time. And so that the shell hasn't changed a whole lot, but what's been very critical, the advancement has been that harness on the inside of that helmet. And so the helmets that we provide, they come with what's called the Viper harness system. It's a very comfortable uh, padded harness system. It's very adjustable. 
And so, you know, obviously we want that helmet to stop or deflect that bullet, uh, but also there's a lot of velocity behind that bullet. So behind that bullet. So we want to make sure that we're addressing that that uh, blunt force trauma in that padding is going to be very critical in that. So um, yeah. like I said, we, you know, we want to protect those vitals and, and that obviously includes the helmet. Okay, so listening to you explain everything, um, there's some dollars behind this. It's um, so how do you guys go about raising the money or getting community involvement to help raise the money to get this critical gear towards the departments? I mean, I mean, I would imagine a department like you know Dallas being as big as they are, or NYPD being as big as it is. It might be a little bit easier for them to just get it and versus the smaller departments around the country. Yeah, and so, you know, we're like you said earlier, we're all over the country, and I think it's the second component why we're so successful. And so when we started SHIELD, you know, it wasn't just about the armor. Uh, it's also about serving and coming alongside our first responders, you know, encouraging them, supporting them, praying for them. And I think it's that part that makes us successful, why so many different people get behind it. And so when somebody donates, whether it's an individual, a business, a church, a foundation, a community group, uh, you know, they have a chance to meet their first responders. And so we do what we call a vest presentation where we have all the gear lined up and we invite the officers and their families to come in. And but what we also do is we invite the donor to come in. And so for a lot of these donors, again, you know, it might be just your average, you know, Joe citizen, you know, it might just be a small mom and pop shop or a local foundation or a church or even something big, you know, like we have the Denver Broncos get behind us and, and get behind the effort. But what they get to do is when they come to that best presentation, they get to see all that gear lined up and they get to realize that they're part of something special and they're part of something big. And, and you know, for the donor, not only do they get to see exactly where their money went, they get to see the fruits of their generosity because the gear is literally there up in the front of the room, but they actually get to meet their first responder. They get to see that first responder receive that gear and they know from that moment on that that first responder is better protected because of their generosity. So as you can imagine, a lot of times it's a very emotional ceremony and uh, you know, it's just so cool to bring truly strangers together. You know, that donor and that officer a lot of times are strangers and and so, you know, I tell our officers, I hope that this is an encouragement to you, that a stranger got behind you. And, you know, we all take our family for granted. We take our friends for granted, our coworkers, as far as the support. But when you have a stranger get behind you and spend that kind of money, uh, you know, this gear isn't cheap. It's anywhere between $2,100 and $2,400. But when we started this, I said, I'm not going to look at what's the cheapest thing out there to donate to. I'm going to find the best gear to donate they deserve to have the best gear. And that obviously doesn't equate to the cheapest stuff. And so for a lot of people, you know, that number 2,100 to 2,400, you know, a lot of people can't afford that. And, but a lot of people, you know, that's still, you know, that is a lot of money. And so what we do though, is we have all kinds of different efforts and a lot of people can get behind the effort. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we'll get some donors and sometimes it's, that grandma or that grandpa that might say, I can only afford $5. I can only afford $20. And we tell them there's no only because at the end of that fundraising effort, that first responder is gonna be better protected. And there's no better way than to have a $20 donation go towards something potentially life-saving. And so, you know, the gear, it is a lot of money, but when you get a whole community behind that effort, it all adds up. And, you know, before we know it, you know, that whole agency is covered. And so obviously you got different sized agencies. And so obviously the timing might take a little bit longer or, or sometimes you might need, you know, you know, bigger businesses or foundations or churches behind the effort that can maybe donate multiple vests. But again, it's, it, it's, it's a sense of urgency on our part that we try to uh, tell the folks out there when we're out there explaining who we are and what we're doing, because we don't know what's going to happen today in their community. Uh, you know, law enforcement's the reality of this might be their last day. This might be the last call that they, they will be on. And unfortunately, something bad might happen. And so we really try and portray, you know, we want to move as fast as we can to protect our first responders in, in, the, in those efforts. 
Uh, yeah, you answered a lot of the follow-up questions already that I was going to ask. And um, guys, I have, as you can see, shield616.org. That's the website where you can go. And your website has a ton of information. And it's not just the, the ease of which an individual can donate, but you've got a lot of events and activities that you put on um, to allow people to volunteer to participate in that, as well as a way to raise money. And specifically, I'm talking about your border to border uh, bicycle um, event. And you had two this year. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yep. So like you said, a lot of times we'll do an event to help raise funds. And so it's not just an individual networking effort. It's it's the event. People can like going to events. They can be part of the event. But uh, two of our or one of our definite most unique events we do, it's called Border to Border. And it's a border to border bicycle ride, not a motorcycle, a pedal bike. And we have first responders and civilians that ride their bicycles across the whole state of Colorado. And this year we did our second state for the first time. We uh, had, had first responders and civilians right across the state of Idaho. And in that effort, we raise funds and we donate vests to the agencies along the way. And, and it's just a great way to bring our first responders together with our civilians. And we've built more than a team with this group. It's a family and it's just such a close family. As you can imagine, right across the whole state, it, it really brings them together. But I want you know, one thing that we didn't realize that we're seeing is just the mental health component of that ride. Uh, not only for our first responders, but for the civilians. You know, everybody's been through a lot the last couple of years. It's, you know, you know, COVID and just all kinds of stuff going on. You know, everyone's just kind of needed, you know, that mental health boost. And for a lot of these people to get out there and do something fun, something special, something different, you know, it, it's been a game changer for him. And even just, you know, just this year with one of our new riders, you know, he said, I can't believe you know, that was just an emotional reset for me and I needed that in my life. And, you know, so what better way to do that than, uh, you know, this crazy border border bike ride. And so not only do we get to donate best impact those communities, but uh, it also just in a small way is able to affect our, the mental uh, aspect of our first responders and our community members. That's fantastic. John and I have um, had folks featured on, on Mad Radio like yourselves um, we often talk about that fitness component and just just for general stress for first responders to have that uh, make sure you're getting some physical activity every day but to have your event be able to not only bring first responders together they can talk about I'm just gonna say the crap of all the years that has built up and is sitting here and is sitting here to use bicycles as a cathartic experience to be able to open up, but to be able to let that stress go and also see how much support they have from the public alongside. Uh, it is, that just warms my heart beyond. And that's exactly what our first responders need. They need to know that we, we back them up. And I'm sure you know you heard the beginning of the show that we've got police officers being put in positions that they shouldn't be in. Um, you know, for whatever reason, they obviously you know can't just walk off the job. But when we can flip the script, if you will, and have people realize that yeah. it's the officers that are always going to be there for the public, yeah. and it's we've got a, the segment of our population is always going to be there to support our first responders. Um, that's amazing. That truly is uh, amazing. Yeah, and um, it's not just you know having a chance to to vent and to get the stuff out of your mind and out of your shoulders, but one thing I noticed about me was you know I didn't have many people. You know, I had a very small bubble outside the law enforcement world, and I, I think that's a very position for our first responders to be in. And so what's also really important is for these officers to get out there and to interact with people who aren't first responders and to talk about normal people things and normal people life, to get them out of that first responder mode 
and to, to get them not thinking about their bad week that they've had or their bad day. You know, that's really important. And I think that's, I think that's very critical why these guys are, are feeling like, hey, this has been a great button for me this week. And it's to have that opportunity to be normal and just to be that average Joe citizen out there doing something different and not to have the stress and the weight of the law enforcement career on them. And so, uh, you know, it has been really fun and really exciting to see that. And so, um, you know, who knows where these bike rides are going to take us? Who knows? I know. Well, knowing uh, all the good stuff that's come out of it, um, expansion time. <laughs> Let's get it to, to more things uh, for sure. Hey, maybe we need to do a winter Texas one. Who knows? It's true. Hey, we, we could uh, we could talk about getting that. You might have some uh, motorcycle people that would want to be involved as well. Maybe they can help with the traffic control. But I know that they would want to uh, want to come out for that. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of growth um, to happen because that's exciting. Now um, on your website. When somebody goes, again, it's right there, folks, on the screen, shield616.org. Um, can a person choose to donate to, like, a specific first responder or a specific agency, or is it like a general pool? No, you know, and, and again, that's what sets us apart. It's not, hey, you're in Texas, donate to Shield, who's in Colorado, and it benefits Colorado, like a lot of the big nonprofits we try and make this as personable to the donor as possible. And so again, whether it's a family, an individual, a business, a church, you know, we want their local first responders to be benefited by their generosity. And, and who knows, they might need that gear in protecting that individual that donated. And so we always try and make their donation to where they want it to go to. You know, obviously if they have a family member, a friend, a neighbor, you know, we have a lot of officers that go to that church. We hear that a lot of times or a business says, Hey, these officers come in and, and do whatever. And so, you know, we do our absolute best to honor that donor's wish and make it as local as possible. So. That's so good. Yep. Now, um, just going back a little bit, you had mentioned a difference in uh, the price for the armor. And on your website, there's a difference between the police package and the firefighter package. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, obviously the police package has a couple different carriers than than the fire department, but um, you know they're very very simple. They're very very similar besides just the look of them, and so it's the same same ballistics, both the soft vest and the plates. Uh, it's the same helmet. Um, a lot of it is just the way that it looks, and and so um, you know they're you know we want our firefighters to have that same exact uh, you know protection, but a lot of times. The way, you know, since law enforcement has to wear that all day, all shift, uh, there's just a couple different carrying methods with different vests that they can that they can go for if they, if they choose to wear that in their department. So. Got it. The, um, so. Okay, so the, yeah, the armor, everything, that part, the, I'll say the guts. <laughs> the guts are the same. Okay, yeah, and the helmet, same thing with the, the firefighters have the same uh, padding. Um, yep. identical. It's all identical, just different colors, and then, like I said, just the actual carrier of the uh, of the vests is, is what's different. Law enforcement. That's, that's fantastic. Now, do you guys have plans to expand to set up uh, in different states and set up staff there? And I know you're Colorado based. What, what's the future plans for Shield Six One Six? You know, we're, we're in 28 states right now, and, you know, we, we don't have plans as far as staff in those states typically. Like, like right now, I'm in the truck driving. We're driving to Tulsa, Oklahoma to donate vests there. But what's really good for us is, and that's how we've been successful, is been, you know, word of mouth or social media, you know, whether it's a donor or that first responder sharing it. And that's how it gets us to those new communities. And so... You know, what we typically find works really well is when you get that networker from that community that can that can maybe get some folks together for a lunch and learn or say, hey, I want to bring this to our community. Let's get some key people behind this. And then, you know, we can come in and bring all the gear and I can share my story in more depth and and, and kind of help have them help us get that ball rolling. And, and, you know, obviously it's very expensive to hire people in all these different states and cities. Uh, it, it'd be a lot. But um, but for that networker, for that individual, for them to be that tip of the spear for us is, is critical, you know, 
because once we get that ball rolling, then other people hear and, and, and it kind of keeps going. And, and so we're always looking for those key folks that have that capability of, you know, networking with their community that believe in our mission, that want to see their first responders get behind that effort. And, and so we, uh, you know, we were always seeking out th those folks to, to have them come alongside us and help us get that rolling in, in their local community. That's awesome. And to date, uh, how many packages or how many, you know, ballistic vests have you given out? Yeah, I, we're over 5,000. So oh, over 5,000 kits in those 28 states and, you know, in hundreds of agencies. So we're very blessed. We still have a lot of work to do and we're going to try and do it as fast as we can. Yeah, you know, when I read uh, the letter, very moving letter to introduce you uh, on the show, you talk about how you receive messages um, from God. A lot of us, including myself, when we're down in that dark hole, we, you know, getting ready to pull the trigger or just end everything um, by suicide. Some of us, you know, we talk about how something pulled me out, something spoke to my heart, and that there were signs and always uh, a bigger picture. Has, has he always been talking to you since you were uh, a first responder? Does it go back before then? Or what was your, I'll call it, God week? You know, I think God speaks to, to each of us differently. And obviously he used, you know, my career to, to, to get really get my attention. Um, but he used some very specific situations that not necessarily got my attention, but really drove home a sense of urgency in We've really got to get out here and get going and, and be doing this. And, um, you know, I'll never forget uh, the Planned Parenthood shooting uh, after that. And, you know, that was right during the time when I was forming Shield 616. And, you know, I had no sense of urgency. And we were just going to start it when we got everything lined up. And, and we, again, weren't moving fast. And, and then, you know, I went through that situation. And, you know, that night uh, it was the most audible sound God has ever, you know, spoke to me with. And um, it, it was so loud that I actually laughed out loud and responded out loud. And it was the middle of the night laying in my bed. And basically all he said was, Jake, what are you waiting for? And it was at that moment when I realized that, the, you know, the need to get out there, get moving as fast as we can. Because like I said earlier, for our first responders, it's the reality of the world of this could be their last day, could be their last call. And so for us, it's not just about that gear, get in that gear, that, that gear today, but it's also, you know, giving them a chance to hear about Jesus Christ today and putting their hope in the ultimate provider of peace and protection and salvation. And so, uh, again, we're moving as fast as we can to do that. And, um, you know, God just continues to bless us and, and, and with just so many different platforms and stages and events and and locations and uh you know we're just trying to keep up and doing his work so we're we're very we're very very blessed that's great and for everybody that's uh, watching if you're wondering where the 616 came from it comes from ephesians 616 take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one yep and obviously when i was forming shield you know i was obviously in ephesians 6 and, you know, I read that verse and I didn't visualize, obviously, a flaming arrow coming at me, but I envisioned a bullet, you know, and and so I got stuck on that verse. But as I focused on that verse, I got stuck on the word faith. And, uh, you know, like I said just a couple minutes ago, I want officers to not only have faith in this gear that it's going to embolden them to go towards that danger, but to have faith in in Jesus Christ is something so peaceful. Uh, when I was in that Planned Parenthood shooting, in that building, when bullets were flying and coming through those walls, I actually noticed how much peace I had in my heart. And it was so strong that I actually had to shake my head and say, Jake, focus on tactics. But also with that word faith, you know, and I think as we look around the country and see what's going on in all these different communities, I want those communities to have faith in their law enforcement or their, their fire department, that no matter how bad that situation is, they're gonna come for you. And they're gonna do the best to protect them. They're gonna do the best to save them. And you know that's why these are our hometown heroes. They're out there making a difference, being a source of light in a very darkened world, even going out there and making that difference when uh, you know the narrative that's out there is anti-law enforcement, anti-first responder, whatever. 
they're still going out there. They're still making that difference. And, uh, you know, if there's something that we could tell everybody out there, uh, you know, we love you. We're thankful for you and continue to go out there and be a source of light in, in, in a darkened world, in a darkened country, in a darkened state, in a darkened city. And, and um, you know, you might not see the fruits of your work, but you are making a difference and uh, just keep up the great work. Well, I think you just answered the uh, last question that I was going uh, to ask. I asked everybody for the, you know, if you could tell, um, give first responders, law enforcement uh, a message, what would it be? You just gave a lot of, uh, uh, that was just fantastic. What, what else, if there's anything, would you like to say? You know, I think it's important to say, we see you and we see the work that you're doing. And we know that you're out there making a difference. And, you know, we can see that, see through that narrative. We can see through a lot of those media reports, you know, and your city is worth fighting for. There's a lot of good people in your community that love you, are thankful for what you're doing. You just don't get to interact with them very often. So remember that, uh, you know, probably a vast majority of your community is behind you. And, you know, keep up that good work and, and don't get discouraged. And that's why we're so thankful for, for you guys and for our groups. You know, we want them to be reminded of that and to help spread the word of, you know, your radio show, our program. Uh, they need that encouragement and that hope and uh, just continue to be strong, be a source of light. And again, we love you and we're grateful for the service you provide. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Website up. Again, if you guys want to check it out, go to shield616.org. Um, you can make donations. You will see everything that we've spoken about on the show. Jake has explained it really well. So whether you're looking for a uh, specific first responder, the whole agency, you can get started on the website. Jake, we also talked about social media. So where uh, where can people find you on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? We're on all of them. What exactly our name is, I can't tell you. But if you do search Shield 616, you'll be able to find us. And I encourage you, you know, on Twitter and Facebook, there's tons of pictures on there. And you can see the, the, what we're doing. And you can see those officers, those firefighters getting that gear. And you can see the communities get behind them. So just search on those different platforms. You won't have any problems finding us. Well, that's great. Jake, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate again you're in your your vehicle, the the time that you just given to spread an incredible message number one, but also the message of it, it just kept going through my head is hey, we got you. We got your back when it comes to the equipment. We want you to be able to do your job the best that at uh, the best of your ability, and that means you do what you were trained to do, respond, uh, knowing that you're protected. So thank you so much. Um, can people also find out about uh, Border to Border on your website as well? And if they want to bring it to their state, right? We, we, will, we would be willing to talk to them about it. But uh, yeah, they can go to our, to our website. And if they go under events, they can find the different Border to Border information on there. But a lot of those are also on our social media. They can see a lot of those pictures on there. Very good, very good. Well, we won't keep you anymore. Thank you so much again for your time. Please continue to be safe out there and we wish you best, uh, all the best on this journey uh, up to Tulsa and the many journeys to continue to uh, provide and do your amazing work. To all of our brothers and sisters in blue and red, stay safe, we love you. Have a great day. All right, thanks Jake. Take care, yeah. talk soon. All right, bye-bye. Wow, what a fantastic uh, program. Again, folks at shield616.org uh, for more information on how you can donate and get the process uh, started. Um, it has been, this hour has flown by again. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching tonight. You know, John and I, we talk about it every week but it's so important just like jake was saying about growing the social media media platform we need to do the same thing here for mad radio so if you're watching us on our facebook platforms thank you so much for being part of our facebook family if you wouldn't mind jumping over to youtube and you just go to youtube.com and there's a search bar at the top type in mad radio texas You'll see a picture of me and John. That's how you know it is Mad Radio Texas and you're in the right place. Just hit the subscribe 
button, or if you'd like to leave a comment um, from one of the shows, go ahead and leave a comment. We're trying to get to 200. That's the magic number for YouTube. So we can um, have our own uh, channel, name it. Um, and then if you're part of our wonderful YouTube family, jump on over to our Facebook. And we've got our two platforms running there, Mad Radio, and that's at, at Making a Difference TX. But we also broadcast, if you guys didn't know, to Facebook uh, on our A Badge of Honor. And you can just go to facebook.com forward slash A Badge of Honor. You'll see the show um, being broadcast there and you can watch it there as well. Um, speaking of a badge of honor, we have got a fantastic upcoming workshop. Big thank yous to the Garland, Texas Police Department, as well as the uh, Law Enforcement Mental Health Alliance of North Texas. They are our sponsors, uh, our main sponsors for this upcoming workshop for active first responders. It is Friday, November 5th. In, uh, it'll be at the Garland, Texas Police Department in their training room. You can go to abadgeofhonor.com, just right there on the screen. And if you are an active first responder, you can uh, register right there to be part of a wellness and resiliency workshop. Now, if you guys don't know um, a badge of honor, we are, and I say we, it's me, John, uh, Jeff Freeman, who's a Rowlett police officer, as well as John Edmondson um, from the Healing Springs Ranch. He's also the CEO of LifeWorks. He is our practitioner. Um, that that is a badge of honor. We uh, we created the 501c3, and so we travel around the state uh, to different agencies that bring us in, but also provide open uh, workshops to uh, so that many different local law enforcement and first responder agencies can come to one location and take advantage of the wellness and resiliency workshop that we're doing again. That is Friday. November 5th at the Garland Police Department. And you can go to abadgeofhonor.com and uh, register for that workshop. Um, we want to thank again Jake from Six, Shield 616 for joining us. And again, the Tactical Leprechaun right here that I'm wearing. Um, fantastic organization. Um, to all of our first responders out there, um, from us here at Mad Radio, we are praying for you every day. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, for putting your lives on the line every day right here at home uh, to protect us in the good old USA. And for all of our military folks, you know, I'm still wearing the camo hat there. I got a little, you know, the, it's the tactical leprechaun. He's green. So, Got a little, uh, got a little military green going on today. Um, we are, we hear you. We are hearing you. We are hearing that you are reaching out. You are not alone in struggle. Um, what is going on in Afghanistan never should have happened in the first place. But here we are in this difficult position. Know that a that Mad Radio and a badge of honor are here for you. And um, the VA um, is overloaded. There are other avenues to reach out. You can see those on our website, again, at abadgeofhonor.com. Um, and I got a message after last week's show that the VA is expanding to do some online virtual uh, assistance for you. So um, if you're in need of assistance, please, reach out, understand that you are not alone. Everybody check up um, your battle buddies. So until next week, thank you again for everything that you do to protect us so that we can bring you Mad Radio each week as we heal our heroes together. Thank you all. See you next week. Mm -hmm.